Your tongue is the tool for the communication of your choices in life. When you are speaking, you are choosing. Is the tool for the communication of your decisions. I place before you, every time you are talking, you are not just making statements, you are making choices. This is very, very critical. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1, verse 21, it said, Death and life is in the power, are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Is there the living Bible version of it? If there is, it is very, very instructive how he puts it. He said, just one moment. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. In the Living Bible, he said, those who love to talk will suffer the consequences. He said, men have died for saying the wrong thing. Men have died for saying the wrong thing. That is the power to live or die is rooted in your tongue. There are people who died before their time, not because the devil was too powerful. They died before their time because their tongue was too wrongful. I read a story where the wife of John Gillick died and saw herself appeared in heaven. And an angel said, welcome to the holy mountain of God. Welcome to heaven. And she said, is this heaven? Who will take care of my husband and my children? I'm not dying now. Even in heaven, she had a choice. I am not dying now. And she returned back to life. I announce to somebody here today, every death looking for you is canceled now. Every death looking for you is cancelled now. Look at your neighbor say, I'm not dying now. Hey! Somebody, somebody see after me. Say to hell with COVID. I am not dying now. I can't die now. In Proverbs chapter 12 and in verse 18, Proverbs chapter 12 and in verse 18, it said the tongue of the wise is health. The tongue, all right, there is, there is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. So the tongue of the wise can bring health and the tongue of the fool brings ill health. That is the way you are speaking can make you strong. And the way you are speaking can make you sick. Hey. A woman went to the medical doctor. She has what is called PUO in medicine, pyrexia of unknown origin. The meaning of that long English is fever whose cause is not known. So the medical doctor, a Christian medical doctor in Korea, interrogated her a little bit, and they can't find the cause of any of the fever. Then suddenly the, the man said, tell me the kind of things you say. And the woman began to recount what she says. Every time somebody says what she doesn't like, she will say, don't burn me with your word. You are burning me up with your words. She kept talking like that until the body began to burn. And there was no cause for it. Is God speaking to someone here? There is power in the tongue. And I prophesy today, the grace to speak right is released upon you right now. In Matthew chapter 12 
and in verse 36 all the way to verse 37, Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, all the way, he said, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Verse 37 said, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So words bring liberty or words bring captivity. Your liberty or your captivity in life is at the mercy of your words. You are either a victim or a victor based on what you are speaking. Is God speaking to someone here? If you look through scriptures, now I'm going to give you examples of people who used words to determine outcomes. Example number one, Abraham. This is strange because God told Abraham to carry Isaac and sacrifice his child. On the mountains, he would tell him. Now, Abraham determined the outcome of the whole adventure before he left in Genesis chapter 22, verse 5. Genesis 22 and in verse 5. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, me and the lad, we will go yonder and worship. And both of us will come back again. Hey, did you see that just now? Me and the young boy, we are going to worship and do the sacrifice God said. But both of us, we are returning. He said, I am not disobeying God. God said, I should offer my son. I'm going to offer him. I'm going to tie him. I'm going to burn him and set him ab ablaze. But there is one thing I am sure, that I'm not coming back alone. Hey! Because God told me that in Isaac shall my seed be called. And this is that Isaac. I am going to give him the Isaac. But out of the ashes, if Isaac has to resurrect, I am returning back with Isaac. That was what the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. Hebrews chapter 11 and in verse 17, say, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, he offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall your seed be called. This is, look at this, accounting that God was able to raise him up. Even from the dead. So from that dead, he received him in a figure. Even though God had concluded his, his sacrifice Isaac, he received Isaac back in a figure. Because before the outcome, he determined by his tongue the outcome from the outset. Is God speaking to somebody here? I announce to someone here today, your outcome is going to line up with the word of God for your life. Give him a shout of victory, I should take your seat. Example number two, Ruth the Moabites. Ruth became an Israelite by force. Normally, the Bible says that a Moabites, a Moabite, should not enter the congregation of the people of God to their 10th generation. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3. But Ruth was a Moabites. She lost her husband. She, she was barren. And she made up her mind by her tongue in Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. When she told her mother-in-law, and Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to return from following after you. For where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. They say my people are a bad people and we are not permitted to mix with Israel. But I have made up my mind that your people shall be my people. And your God shall be my God. Ay, 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 ay. And you know what happened? Ruth went all the way. Her people 
became not just her people, but Ruth married Boaz, who is the father of Obed, who is the father of Jesse, who is the father of David, who is the father of Solomon, who is the great, 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 great grandfather of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. She did not just find her way into the lineage, the commonwealth of Israel, but by her utterance, by her declaration, she became an Israelite by force and became the mother of our Lord. Hear me. Nothing is against you if your mouth is not against you. Nothing can be against you, not your tribe, not the position of your bet, not the circumstance of your country, not the economy of, of the nation. Nothing can be against you if you are not against yourself. Lift your voice and say, in the name of Jesus, I shall fulfill my destiny and no devil can stop me. Example number three, David. David was the man, little boy with a catapult. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 43 all the way to verse 50, who stood before a giant and David killed Goliath with his word before he killed Goliath with his mouth. And the Philistines said unto David, am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistines cursed David by his gods. And the Philistines said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistines, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I am coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. He said, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. He is prophesying. He is determining the outcome of the battle. I will smite you. I will take your head from you. This boy has no knife. <laughs> he said, I am going to cut off your head. Do you cut off people's head with hand? I will take off your head from you. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Hey! And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. And what did David do? So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him but there was no sword Goliath you left before you came to Shiloh. I announce today, the Goliath shall collapse before you return. 